Hi, my name is Gregory Joseph. I'm one of the team members that worked on the infant food frequency questionnaire um, this summer, the summer of 2020. This is version 4.0 of the project. We're the 14th to, work on, to have worked on the um, infant food frequency questionnaire project. Um, the specific goal of this video is to demonstrate from the user's perspective um, the parent um, portal and also um, hopefully we'll go ahead and add in um, some high level um, discussion about the code and how it's structured and some of the changes that we made from version 3.0 to the current version that we are um, documenting now, which is version 4.0. So first thing we wanna get started is um, let's go ahead and go directly to the portal itself um, and take a look at what we started there. So um, this is the landing page for the portal. Um, this is actually up and running. Um, this is after you've installed all the different um, services, um, all five parts into your local computer. Um, again, if you haven't done that part already, you'll, you'll want to reference one of our earlier documentation videos, which actually will walk you through the deployment process. Um, but to avoid redundancy, um, we, so I'm just going to skip that part, um, but start off with an actual login. Um, this is the page, the landing page, of course, for um, whether you're logging in as an admin, a clinician, or a parent, um, this is the login page that you would get to. Um, depending on the login that you put in, it would be recognized and it will take you to the appropriate iteration of the, of the app. Um, so that you have your distinct perspective. So that's to say that there's a distinct ad admin perspective and clinician perspective and also a parent perspective. And again, and our goal in this video is just to walk through the parent perspective and show how the user will actually um, navigate the app. So I'll go ahead and log in with one of the parents um, that we were testing with, and this is parent two. And the default password um, that is used is just admin123 um, so that we can actually get logged in. Um, okay, so um, one of the things that we added, you might have noticed it just briefly um, as you were logging in, um, is there was some animation um, there on the page. So it just kind of let the user know that um, the page is thinking. The first time you log into the portal, it may take some time to actually um, log you in because um, all the services running on your computer or your local computer the first time might take some time. But this is once the parent logs in, this is in the case where they go to a doctor's office and the clinician would give them um, a login um, and a password to log into the portal um, or if they already have an existing one and they were at home and they would log in to form um, one of the tracking forms, um, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, but I'll just pretty much walk through each one of the tabs so that um, we'll get to kind of understand um, what the functionality is. Um, so the first thing that you have, the major thing, uh, of course, is the questionnaire. So as a parent logs in, the default, you're under the questionnaire tab and you can click on begin questionnaire and it will pull up an actual questionnaire so that you can actually fill that part in. Um, one of the things that we changed from version 3.0 is that we added some instructions. So we refined the instructions a little bit so that they're a little more user friendly so the user gets an idea of what's expected of them. Um, again, we added in a logo to a lot of the pages because there wasn't one before. Um, so that was one of the things that the PO requested of us um, for this, um, for these sprints. So um, this development cycle. So we added the logo into it as well. Um, one of the things that we did is we also removed um, something that was uh, a questionnaire ID, which was built into 3.2 version 3.0. We had to deconstruct that and remove that from the form. So that way um, there's no ID required in order to fill out the form. Um, I believe the previous, the PO at the time had the idea of um, having the clinician or the doctor give the parent a specific ID in order to fill out the form. Um, but as ideas have progressed from that point, the, it was no longer required. So we had to um, remove that feature um, from 
from the questionnaire. So here, um, instead of asking for an ID, um, which it would have done in version 3.0, you'll simply input the, the um, infant's age, and then you will start to fill in the information um, as instructed. Um, one of the things that we also did um, specifically um, is we changed some of the messaging so it's a little more intuitive as to what's being asked. So in this case, um, is assuming that you're giving the baby breast milk. Um, and so you want to indicate the number of times that you're giving the baby breast milk, whether it's twice, and whether you're giving it to him twice weekly or twice um, per day. So in this case, I'll just say it's twice per day. Um, again, we'll give the formula, how many times you gave the baby formula, and you will say once per day. Um, here, you will require to put in the servings. So you'll put in, um, in the Dropbox, it has some predetermined fill-ins. Um, how many times you gave the baby water, so we'll say twice per day as well. Um, or I'll just for demonstration sake, I'll say twice per week. Um, and how many times did you give the baby cereal? Um, you have to enter a value there um, and say twice per day or per week. And then also put in a serving size. But for demonstration, I'm going to not put in a serving size. And I'm going to, since I don't have any of these other additional um, foods, I'm going to go ahead and skip the additional food so that it redacts the form so those are no longer being considered. You can already see here it's highlighting that there's some information that's missing, um, but I'll try to click and submit and it will tell you to please check all the fields and it'll give the directions that information is missing from this field. Um, and so one of the things we did, we did add logic so that um, from version 3.0, it didn't really have um, error messaging that would tell the user um, what went wrong and what needed to be corrected. Um, and so we added that so that it highlights the specific field that's missing and gives some messaging um, as to what should be in the field. So now that I've filled in all the different parts, I can go ahead and submit the form. And um, the questionnaire has been sent to the issuer. In this case, this is the clinician, the doctor, or, or the nurse practitioner, or whoever um, directed the parent to fill out the form. So that form is completed. Um, and that's it for the questionnaire part. Uh, the next tab that we have here is for the um, questionnaire history. And so you can actually go in here and you can take a look at um, the parents' previous questionnaires that they've submitted. Since this is a test, parent two is a test um, case and a test login, a test user, um, there's a, an abundance of questionnaires there, but normally, um, there would be some progression as far as the questionnaires are filled out. So there had been one questionnaire at one month old, um, perhaps at four months old, and then the next one maybe at eight months old, depending on how often they would have visited um, the clinician, the doctor, um, and were required to submit the form. So here you can actually view the results um, of the form to see what information was submitted. Um, and there's some conversion that is done on the background. Um, and it will show you um, the daily average. Um, and then also if you wanted to kind of take a look at the nutrients to figure out if they were above or below the recommendations um, based on the calculations, it will um, do that as well and display if it's normal or if it's above based on the foods that you fed um, to the child um, and based on the known nutritional um, value of vitamins and that are within that food, the calculation is automatically done and it will generate a table that tells you if it's above, below, or just right, normal for the child. So again, the parent is able to see that there. In the case that a clinician adds um, additional feedback to a, um, to a questionnaire form, that information would be displayed here in this field. Um, if there's any special directives information that, that's done, again, you can look at the clinician video and it will show you how that information is actually submitted and actually show you that um, it does display for the parent as well, but here is where it would display. Um, and then if you take a look at the food items, again, it will kind of, uh, based on the types of food, it will give you an indication whether it is above, below um, recommendations, um, recommended values. Uh, based on what was submitted on the individual questionnaire forms themselves. Um, 
Again, if we go over to here, uh, just from an educational perspective, um, under the recommendations tab here from the, the parent portal, uh, based on the age uh, of the infant, um, basically from zero up to 5.9 months, um, uh, all the way up to, um, to 24 months, it has different values. Um, the, uh, so this is something new, this part here is something new that we added um, to make it a little more user-friendly in version 4.0. So depending on the selection that you made, the recommendations will change slightly. So in this case, for uh, a newborn from zero up to 5.9 months, um, this is the specific recommendations of breast formula that you are to give. If you change over to six months, um, this is where you'd be able to start adding in formula and some whole grains. So this, these are the specific recommendations. Um, and again, once you go up to 12 months, um, these values tend to increase, and those are the specific recommendations that are given um, based on the age of the child. So again, this is something new that we added from version um, 3.0. Um, this is based on the requirements of the PO because they wanted a more um, friendly and um, accurate um, dissemination of information so it's an opportunity to educate the parent so this part here is just basically um, the recommendations based on um, professional recommendations um, and again here we'll have tracking which is designed to really be um, not a full questionnaire but something in between office visits if you will so you would put in the month of the child and you would enter uh, their age. And based on that, there are going to be recommendations um, that populate. And you will simply just um, state whether you're going above, um, below, or meeting that exact amount. And so um, you can just fill this out really, really quickly. A parent would fill this out really quickly. Um, on a weekly basis, and this would help the clinician track um, exactly how the parent is progressing with the baby. So there's uh, previous forms that I've filled out, so it will put them into order. Um, this is a previous one that I had filled um, prior to doing this video, so it will allow the clinician to kind of just see a general pattern um, developing uh, based on the different food categories that are being provided to that child. And um, so that's the tracking history. So the tracking will, is where they would fill out the form and the tracking history would show out um, the history of the forms that have been submitted. So this is uh, from the user's perspective for a parent of an infant who would go and fill in this, this information. So that way the clinician would be able to track the nutritional intake of the child over a set period of time. Okay? And that basically covers the actual functionality um, from the user's perspective. Um, what I did also want to bring in is just from uh, the code perspective, just really, really high level. Um, so a lot of the functionality that we looked at for the parent um, is within um, the FFQ questionnaire web um, app. And so um, if you're looking for those individual pages, um, there is a recommendation section for the parent, which has the CSS, has the HTML. Um, it also has some of the JavaScript um, affiliated with uh, that particular page um, and some of the structures that are in that particular page, um, including the um, recommendations that are there. Um, because one of the things that we had to actually add in for um, the uh, from the admin perspective is one of the things that we add in for the PO this semester is their ability so that they can go in and actually make changes to this text from the admin perspective from the admin portal and I'll also show you exactly how that's done and how we developed that part um, but from a high level it's a good idea to just kind of remember um, that all the different pages are um, kind of separated in here 
And so you can actually see the individual sections, whether you're looking at the admin or if you're looking at the, the parent um, header, um, if you're looking at the clinician portal um, or the recommendations part, um, everything is pretty much um, segmented in here in the code where you go under apps, pages, um, and actually see how we structured everything. So I think that covers all that you would need to get started with the parent portal. Again, um, I'm running this locally. So if you're running it locally, you want to point to a local MongoDB uh, with all this information loaded in. Or um, if you're working from a web deployed version, then you want to point to wherever the MongoDB is um, online. So that way you'll be able to push and receive data. And, and so that pretty much covers um, the parent portal. Thank you.